What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the headquarters, the HQ. I'm Nicholas. That is Dr. Jesse Morse of the Fancy Doctors, as always, joining us on Thursdays to break down all of the biggest injuries going on uh, around the fantasy football world. You might be able to see me in HD because I actually hooked up my camera and I know I'm looking nice and crispy because it gets dark over here. So I had to put on a new light. You don't, you don't need to worry about all the technical shit. What we need to worry about is the injuries going into week 14. Is it officially fantasy playoffs? Hopefully y'all are on a buy this week. So you need to worry about it. You know, what's funny about getting a buy in the first round. It always feels like, you're like resting your guys. It feels like in real life, the guys that you have on your team get like an extra week of rest when that's obviously not the case. But like I, I have a, a league where I have uh, Tyler Lockett and Julio Jones like on a, uh, and I have first round buys. So it's like, oh, this is nice. Like they don't have to play for me this week. It feels like I'm getting like another week of rest for them, even though that's not really the case at all. But uh, welcome back to the, to the channel, Dr. Morse. How are we doing? I'm oh, doing good. Um, uh, I had a couple teams that did really well. I snuck into the playoffs. Thankfully, Dalvin Cook got injured long enough for my partner, for my opponent not to win. Um, and then um, Chris Carson came back in, which helped me win in another league. So that's <laughs> kind of crazy. Hey, man, you but, just got to uh, get in the dance. You just got to get in the dance this time. And then uh, I had one. Uh, if you follow me on Twitter, you'll know exactly which league I'm talking about. I had one league. It's a 12-team, $200 buy-in. It's my one of my old school leagues. I've had it for probably 10 years. Mm -hmm. I had... Lamar Jackson, Dalvin Cook, O.J. Howard, and it was a full PPR, all in 13. What was it? Wait, the record it went 0-13. Went... Well, you had a team with Dalvin Cook that went 0-13. Dalvin Cook, Lamar Jackson, O.B.J. was disappointing, and O.J. Howard, obviously, that was – but but those are those all expected two, to be those really – Those two alone should have given you at least, like, four wins. That's, a, that's absurd. Yeah, I'm telling you, it was like – I'm like, you've got to be shitting me. Like, it looked – I'm like – this was I, I, I couldn't but I win to save my life. I mean, every every year is weird, but this year in particular, I feel like I don't know. The studs were very hit or miss, and and there was a lot of players that busted. But let's get into the injuries before we uh, before we get any further into this, because I know you got some things that you're committed to afterwards, because you have a real life and you're a real doctor and you have real places to be. Unlike myself, <laughs> I just talk about fantasy football all day. Let's talk <laughs> to the uh, the quarterback. So. Uh, I mean, not much to worry about when it comes to Kyler Murray. Obviously, he, uh, he's coming off of a bad game. He's got the hamstring injury, but, you know, he ran for a 20-plus yard touchdown, so that doesn't really seem to be concerned. The bigger news, uh, fellow rookie Daniel Jones, who went just five picks after Kyler, uh, Kyler Murray in the draft, they come out today with a report saying that he's very likely to miss their showdown on primetime football with the Philadelphia Eagles. And Eli Manning is going to be the starting quarterback again for the New York Giants. And he is going to finish his career with a below 500 record, most likely after he loses this game. So Daniel Jones, uh, he was, I mean, obviously you're not happy about starting him at this point, but if you're in a super flex league, you had been riding him maybe into the playoffs because he has a very nice schedule going forward. Do you think we're going to be able to depend on him for, you know, weeks 15 and week 16? I think he's done for the year. Yeah. I think they shut him down. I mean, so here's the thing. We saw Matt Ryan have a high ankle. We saw Matt Patrick Mahomes have a high ankle. Is this a high ankle? Um, on it? Yeah, okay. yeah. So the problem is, best case scenario, it's like two to three weeks. That's pretty much the end of the year. If they were playing for the playoffs, maybe they push him back. Why would you would potentially injure or risk a further injury to your franchise quarterback when it really is not going to change anything? Yeah. That's, that's, that's my thoughts. I mean, that, that's kind of my thoughts on it. Yeah, I mean, they get the Eagles this week, the Dolphins, and then the Redskins. So it was set up to be yeah. a few monster weeks in a row for DJ. But if you have them, uh, plan accordingly Correct. on the waiver wire. No one else really at the quarterback position, I don't think, to discuss. That's a, that's a big name at this point that you might be starting in fantasy. Baker. Oh, right. Baker's dealing with his hand injury. He said he'll be fine. Um, was it to his throwing hand? Yeah. Uh, so it just popped up a minute ago saying that uh, he didn't do any throwing today in the throwing part of the practice boat. His direct quote, mama didn't raise no wuss. <laughs> That's what he said? That's what it just popped up on, on Fantasy Life. It literally yeah, he, needs to go, he needs to stay out of the news with quotable things because no one no one really needs to be quoting Baker Mayfield right now. <laughs> like that should, <laughs> oh, it was, it was comedy. Cute it was cute. I actually just saw a, a report that they, uh, Odell Beckham wants out of Cleveland. Odell Beckham wants be out as soon as this off season. And uh, I, I don't know, it was such a shit show. So Baker, I mean, do you have any concern about him? Cause he's another player who you might be able to start in the playoffs. I know, I mean, he's been on somewhat of a hot streak uh, schedule is, 
is favorable for the fantasy playoffs because after uh, – I mean, they just play the Steelers, but now they get the Bengals, the Cardinals, Ravens are obviously a very tough matchup. But the next two are definitely playable, Bengals and Cardinals, um, assuming that the – a uh, hand injury, you know. Uh, I mean, I mean, part, so so part of me, the fact that he wouldn't throw on a Wednesday, a little concerning. I, I highly doubt he has a fracture because he would probably have played, or, or he'd be benched and he wouldn't. He would, they wouldn't let him play. So, with that being said, um, I think this uh, he's probably going to play. But how much do you trust him? Uh, if 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 he leaves the game or is just doing awful. Um, and they bring in whoever is back up, as I don't even know who it is. Then, I mean, how does this affect OBJ? How does this affect Landry, who's been really good? How does this affect uh, Najoku, who we don't know if he's coming back uh, this week? I haven't heard anything. Um, does this affect Chubb? Does this affect Hunt? So, like, this isn't really just Baker. This is other people as well. Yeah, uh, yeah, I hear you. So, I mean, it's definitely a little bit of a downgrade for the entire Cleveland offense, most likely, but – if he says he's going to be out there and you don't have another option, I mean, it's not its not the worst thing you could possibly do out there. Let's shift to the running back position because we have a very, very, very big name who, uh, I mean, for the most part, if you have him on your team, you should be sitting somewhere in the playoffs. Unless you're Dr. Morris, you might be 0-13. But let's talk about Dalvin Cook. So he exited Monday night's game. <laughs> he had the Seahawks with a shoulder injury. Uh, he fell on it, and he was in a lot of pain. But after the game, he came out and he said he'll definitely be ready to play in week 14 against the Lions. He came out again today and said, uh, that he will definitely be ready to play again. So my question now is, like, yes, he says he's going to be able to play, but is this going to be a James Conner situation where, like, he was dealing with the shoulder for a while and, like, he yeah. so, person? What's going on here? First of all, this is a re-injury of his week 11 chest injury, which is actually an uh, SC joint, which is okay. a similar injury to what Tyreek had. If you remember way back when, when Tyreek had his dislocation, Oh. This is not a dislocation. This is a sprain. Okay. So this freaking hurts. Anytime you do this, that shoulder, the, the, the clavicle or collarbone wants to pop out. And, and that's why it hurts. So he took a shot to the shoulder kind of like, like that. And it, and it basically repopped it out or re aggravated it again. It took 11 days to get him back on the field last time. He got four to five this time. So not ideal. Okay. Yeah, Let's put it that way. Because he's going to be, I mean, he's going to be using his shoulder on every single play. Um, limited today this just popped up um and we'll talk about see one in a minute here's the issue that i have with this um will he probably play yes should he play no they're playing the lions they really don't need him for the lions in my opinion madison looked fantastic uh, madison is a very capable backup i mean if he was on several other teams he'd probably be the starter i wish i i wish they would talk him off a ledge and say Rest it up for a week. Let Madison get his share. You can get a little rest. But I don't. The problem is I don't think they're going to do that. He's at high risk for re-injuring it or making it worse. Uh, you can technically make this worse by further tear some of the ligaments in and around the clavicle. You can break the clavicle. You can dislocate the clavicle, um, which is what Tyreek had. So like, there's a lot of things that um, potentially could make this worse. So that's the problem with this is that I know he wants to play, and it may be in his best interest to sit, but that doesn't always work out for us. And if it's like a 50, 50 split, then I feel like it kills both guys. Yeah. I mean, I, I think then, like, you don't really on, like Madison's been efficient on limited workload and cooks, obviously like multiple times the amount of talent that Madison has cook has. So I think, I mean, I think both of them could be efficient on limited workload, but like you said, I mean, you don't want it being cannibalized because for the most part, if you own cook, you probably own Madison, and you just want Cook at full strength. You get the Lions, the Chargers, and the Packers. Like You can't really find an easier run schedule over the next three weeks than he has. So this injury timing is really unfortunate. But if he suits up, like you can't you can't yeah. get Dalvin Cook. There's no shot. I mean, maybe they'll use Madison as more of an in the, in the trenches grind yeah. because he's thicker, and maybe they use Cook more in passing situations. That would be kind of ideal. But, you know, that normally never happens. Like what, what is ideal is usually not what we end up seeing happen. Cook had a solid first half. And he was done for the game. Yeah. Most people probably lost that matchup uh, unless they were way up. Yeah. Because he did, he underperformed because he only played half the game. So that's part of the issue is that if he is playing, you better hope he plays that whole damn game. Because if he doesn't, you, there's a good chance you're going to probably uh, miss as a result. You're going to just have issues with it. Yep. So I don't know. Uh, yeah. That's where I'm at. I'll, I'll we'll provide an update on Friday, Saturday. 
Uh, but right now, I think he plays. I'm just not happy about it. Yeah, so make sure you're following Dr. Morris on Twitter, at Dr. Jesse Morris, because he keeps you guys updated throughout the week uh, pretty much in live time. As soon as breaking news comes out, he'll give you his medical opinion on those things, which is obviously very important to have at this point in the season. Let's move over to the Kansas City Chiefs backfield. We've got a whole lot of fuckery going on there. we got Darrell Williams, who pulled up on a non-contact hamstring injury. He seems like he's probably going to be shut down for the remainder of the season because we're at the end of it. We have Damian Williams still dealing with the, hand, uh, the rib injury. They gave him an open chance to possibly get into the game this week and play, but he also did not play again this Wednesday. So it seems like, again, it's a pretty serious rib injury. It, it's very likely that we could be sitting with uh, LaShawn McCoy and Darwin Thompson kind of carrying the load against the Patriots, which is obviously one of the toughest matchups in the NFL for running back. So uh, in, in my opinion, I mean, um, obviously, I, I, medically, I, my opinion is really doesn't fucking matter. But if you wanted it, I would say that Damian Williams is probably not going to play this week. And it's going to be LaShawn. It's going to be Darwin Thompson. And the only way either of those goes into my lineup is LaShawn McCoy as a desperate flex play. But I'm not excited about any. I don't think either of Will either Williams play. I think uh, Damian, his ribs are really hurt. And yeah. I think he's just baby in him at this point. I think Darrell legit stuff. I thought it was a bad knee injury, but he got lucky and it was a hamstring. Mm -hmm. um, but he's still going to be out at least a week or two at a minimum. Um, they signed Spencer Ware, so that gives you an idea of how kind of limited they are. Yeah. Um, and I think McCoy uh, plays a role. And I think, uh, I think Darwin actually can, may help finally help us. Yeah, um, can't play him anyway. But, 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 and that's the problem. It's like, uh, I mean, this is a, an important week. You're running out. I mean, do you feel comfortable playing this guy? No. Nah. Um, yeah, I mean, the only thing that comes down to is whether or not you think Damian Williams would play with a rib injury, but it's not a good start to the week. Obviously, it's early in the week, so it's possible. But, like, just the fact that he's not even limited at practice already tells you that there's no shot he's getting a 100% workload by the time Sunday comes around. So it's a shitty situation there. A couple other workhorses. We got Marlon Mack returning from this hand fracture. Uh, if he's back, I'm a, it, like he's very, very likely to be back active for week 14. His workload should be back to 100%, right? Like they don't have to keep him limited at all. His hand should be all fully ready to go, right? No, I mean, uh, he. I, it's, it's a hand. We don't know the details of it. He should be, yeah. He should be good to go. I'm not concerned uh, yeah. about about him. If he's cleared, he's good. Yeah, that backfield has turned into a little bit of a mess, a guessing game the last couple of weeks. So uh, with Mac back, if anyone is wondering what our opinion is, our opinion is in terms of like who's going to get the touches, I think it goes right back to Marlon Mack as a workhorse there. So um, I would throw him back into my lineup without hesitation. I still think he's very much the guy there. James Conner, still dealing with a shoulder injury, continues to miss games. Like, I mean, just the fact that they keep fighting for a playoff spot makes you think that he's going to return eventually and he's maybe one week out or two weeks out or whatever. Like, where do you see James Conner coming back? Like, do we see him again this season, do you think? Here's the issue. If they were out of the playoffs, I think they would IR him and he would yeah. get surgery. Yeah. The fact that they're still lingering, they're trying to, like, buy as much time as they can. And if they're, like, in a, in a winner, winner go home situation, they may start him. Yep. Um, but I just don't think – I think he's at very high risk for injury again, and they can't risk it in, in a week 15 when they may have to play a week 17. I know every win counts, but I don't think he's ready. I, I think he really probably needs surgery. It's just they, it's not it's just a bad timing thing. Yeah, uh, he hasn't played since week 11. Uh, he he did get a limited practice in today, so I guess technically he's trending in the right situation. They get the Arizona Cardinals, whose defense has been fucking blasphemous at this point, but their their pass defense is worse than their run defense has been pretty much. But that being said, like, how much do you rely on Devlin Hodges? If James Conner is back this week, uh, I, I'm probably going to put him into my lineup. I'm not going to feel good about it. I would rather, I mean, hopefully if you own James Conner, you own Benny Snell, you got to like the workload that he's getting, but he's not the guy that's, he's not taking, you know, the hundred percent workload that James Conner had. So it's like just a messy situation over there in general. So hopefully I don't know. I, I would take a limited James Conner probably over a Benny Snell at this point. Jordan Howard. I think Edmonds will be back. Is Jordan Howard ever coming back? Uh, Sanders has been pretty good. Jordan right? Howard. This he hasn't been cleared for contact yet. He still hasn't. So until they once they clear him, he's good. But if they don't clear him, as far as I as far as last I checked, he, they haven't cleared him. If they don't clear him by say Friday, then obviously he's not playing. So this could be a neck issue and it may be more of a risk issue. They're keeping him uh, in, in shape. I just don't think he, he plays uh, until they, they have to clear him for contact, and they haven't done that yet. 
Yeah, it's so crazy. And I, I'd imagine we'd hear something about their roster because obviously they, they brought on Jay Ajayi and we'd probably hear something about another running back either getting negated to the practice squad or getting cut or something if Gordon Howard is close to returning. So it seems like it might be another uh, another week of you know, yeah. up for I mean, Miles Sanders because they're going against the Giants who won't have Daniel Jones. I mean, it's not like Daniel Jones is a monster upgrade on Eli Manning, but I can't imagine the Giants having the game script where Miles Sanders doesn't get another, you know, 18 touches or so. So you can – to fire him up again because he's been just so involved in the passing game. So Jordan Howard likely out. Miles Sanders good to go. Now we have a we have a lot of question marks mm-hmm. at the wide receiver position. Holy shit! Let's talk about Adam Thielen, who was very close to returning last week. I'm gonna I'm gonna assume that he's ready to go this week. He didn't practice today. He didn't practice today. Jesus Christmas! Why? That's very bad for a Wednesday because he re-injured his hamstring last Monday. So all the good progress he had made, yeah, he went backwards. Yeah, I don't know why I didn't know that because as soon as T.Y. Hilton re-injured his calf strain, like last week, whatever midweek, I just I told all of my followers like I'm just assuming T.Y. Hilton's done for the year. This was as soon as we heard that he re-injured his shit. I was like, T.Y. Hilton's probably not coming back, and now that's all the news that we're hearing. So you're not confident about Adam Thielen returning this week, and that's really fucking unfortunate because he's going against the Lions. I. I- I wish – I really wish he would play. I just don't think I – th- I think they're being really smart with him. Uh, if they – if he was playing last week, they'd probably win that game. He also – I really feel that way. I'm not returning until I'm 100%. Because, I mean, what, I feel like as a player, that's so frustrating, sitting out for a couple of weeks, coming back, and then immediately re-injuring it within, like, five – Oh, five 100%. Time. So, the next time gotta you come be. out, you, you Definitely know – Definitely got to be. Learned, yeah, you learn that lesson. You know, you're like, uh, you know, I'm not going to come back too early again. Yeah. So it's his mindset, unfortunately. I mean, remember Leonard Fournette last year? He came back too early, and he had a massive re-injury, and he was out like another six weeks. So, like, and that was my concern with him this year. But this this can happen with hamstrings, especially if you have a bad tear or you re-injure it too quickly yep. before coming back. I mean, I honestly think he, he literally waits until he feels 100% where he has no issues whatsoever, which unfortunately is not a good time right now. I, mean, I, yeah. I don't think he plays this week. I have a dynasty league where I made the playoffs as like the – not the one or two seed, so I don't have a bye this week. Two of my top receivers are Julio Jones and Adam Thielen. So I'm, now I'm expecting to be without Adam Thielen. Julio Jones, I mean, he's trending in the right direction, but it almost seems pointless for them to throw him back into this game. Like, he can't be 100%, right? There's no reason to push him right now. Do you Like, I, just as a, a normal sports fan, just knowing what I know – it seems like it'd be dumb to throw him out there. I would put him at 50-50 at best. I think uh, I, right now I have him at 60% for what it's worth. Yeah. Uh, he practiced in limited capacity today. I think that's great. Yeah. Um, if he practices in full or at least limited, I'd say on Friday, I think there's a very good chance he plays. As much as I want Julio out there, this is essentially James Conner's injury. This is the same injury. So he's going to have – As far as we know, this is the same. He's going to have so, trouble so, I mean, for, for balls and stuff, right, with his shoulder messed up? Yeah. I mean, this is what, yeah. you know, this is what you need it for. So this is what he does every, every 10, 15 times a game. Damn it. All right. You know? well, uh, and yeah. He's going to try to push off. I mean, he can't do any of that. So it's not, it's not ideal. It's not ideal. Yeah. My dynasty team is shot right now. My, Adam, Juju my, is out. My first, like, my, I think – of my first round picks or my first six picks, they were like Cam Newton, Damian Williams, Julio Jones. I traded for Adam Thielen. Like all of my top guys are injured right now. And I'm like scraping my way into the playoffs somehow. So there's going to be another disappointing week. I'm assuming just because I'm not going to have my guys at full strength, unfortunately, but that's what it is. So keep an eye on Julio Jones's uh, progress. Again, he's one of those players where he's just too good that if he's active, you got to have him in your lineup. Uh, let's talk about T Y Hilton a little bit. Cause same thing with Adam Thielen. He re-injures his calf strain that he had. And now, like, every report coming out of camp is, is sounding super, super pessimistic. I would be shocked if he comes back this year. Do you agree? Yeah, I legit think he's done for the year. He, he gave a couple of reports today, and he looked really just disappointed. Yeah. These calves are no joke, man. People think they're easy. They're not. They don't – they injure easily. They don't heal quickly. And you need it for everything you do. This is your propulsion. So if you don't have your propulsion, you can't run. I have a feeling they're going to lose this week and they're going to be out and then they're going to IR him. I, I think that's what's going to happen. Yeah. It's um, ugly, unfortunately. It's ugly over there in Indy. They got no Ebron. They got no Hilton. They, they don't have a lot of players. Yeah. One, the video Max been out, banged up. Yeah. The video we put out this morning, uh, me and Noah were talking about low key, like dynasty trade targets. And I'm, I'm liking Paris Campbell because 
if you look at the free agents next year for Indy, T.Y. Hilton is the only weapon they're bringing back. All three tight ends, you have Doyle, Ebron, Mo Alley-Cox are free agents. You have Chester Rogers, Zach Pascal, Devin Funches, all of their top wide receivers free agents too. There's no one else left in that offense for them. So um, Harris Campbell, I mean, he might come back for these last couple of weeks and, and do a little something. something. So I, I keep an eye on him because I, I also expect T.Y. Hilton to be shut down. Uh, we have Juju, another top receiver who is, uh, have been very, very disappointing. At this point, I mean, he's very, very much droppable. I don't think he's going to play this week. And even when he is playing, it's with the backup quarterback and the consistency between these receivers is just a fucking merry-go-round carousel. You're, you're playing fucking whack-a-mole. Yeah, I mean, which. I think this knee injury is, is done for the year. And I wouldn't be surprised if he ends up having surgery. Cam Newton is finally opting to have surgery on the Liz Frank injury. Should he have done this? fucking six months ago or whatever the beginning of the season and had more time to recover. Is this something I had this done in friggin' September? Yeah. So now, so where does that put him on the timeline? Cause in that same league, I have Cam Newton sitting on my, he would have been done either way. I mean, he would have been done for the whole year. So, I mean, going forward though, like in a, like I have him in a dynasty league. Should I be thinking that he might be a starter for me next year or should I like abandon hope on that too? Shoulders toast. What? What do you mean his shoulders toast? He's been sitting on that for – he hasn't thrown a ball in like – That's the report. Years. His shoulder – Doc, lie to but me. But it's not – it's not <laughs> – structurally, <laughs> I think his shoulder is toast. So, what about uh, that's the, some uh, of the rumblings. I'm not worried about the foot. I'm worried about the shoulder. Okay. Well, um, I'm worried about the shoulder. I'm I mean, you saw his passes. They were awful. Yeah. I mean, the foot – the foot will be fine for, for next season. I think it's his shoulder. I think that's – they may not want to address it, but that that's the issue. Okay. All right. Well, so I don't want nothing to do with Cam. We'll Stay bridge. away. We'll cross that bridge when we get there, all right? Um, no other wide receivers really to talk about right now. We'll John about. Ross will be back. Good pickup. Maybe a good play. Uh, not problem, worried about him. The problem with um, John Ross is that he'll probably be that back this week. However, they have on their schedule – I mean, if you're not going to play him against the Browns, then he's going to play against the Patriots, and he's not going to do much. So by the time they're one week 16 matchup against Miami – happens like you're not going to really feel that confident in starting him you know risky it's very risky especially when you're in a, in a playoff league I, I'll throw some DFS lineups for him and, and I'm, just because I have the luxury of being able to to do that Respect. but but I think for for unless you're in a super deep league like uh, I think it's too risky all right let's talk tight ends real quick but, uh, I know this is chopping up because I have too much shit plugged into my laptop right now and it's yes thousand programs uh, so Greg Olson is probably going to be out with the concussion. Honestly, it doesn't really matter whether or not he's in, but I do like Ian Thomas as a Correct. streamer against the Falcons. If Greg Olson is out, Zach Ertz, like what is going on with the hamstring? Because they said he injured it in week 12, but he's been playing through it and looked great. And then all of a sudden, once we actually heard the reports that he had an injured hamstring, then he plays terribly. It was just, just, uh, just a random game in which he had a lack of production or was the hamstring somehow more affecting him this week than it was the last couple of weeks, although it already happened, you know? It's a good question. I don't know. I I, I, okay. I don't have a good answer for you. That's okay. I, yeah. I don't. I mean, I'm not. I'm not overly worried about his hamstring. I just he didn't play well. Yeah. Okay. Um, maybe it, maybe it's in his head. Maybe it is affecting him a ton. Um, either so, way, uh, it's hard to trust him right now. Yeah. In, in my last last week, I, I in the one league I have Zach Ertz, I picked up Tyler Higby on Sunday morning when Gerald Everett was ruled out. And I was like, think about it. Because I had to wait until Zach Ertz was, you know, ruled active. And I didn't make the move. I kept Ertz in and left Higby on my bench. And now I was like, fuck, you know, I, luckily I ended up getting the win, so it didn't matter. But now we're looking at Gerald Everett possibly out again with the knee, makes Tyler Higby a pretty strong play again. Is Gerald Everett, yeah. I, haven't, I haven't heard any news on him. Is he ruled out for this week? I haven't heard anything. I wouldn't be surprised if he was out again, though. All right, I'm going to pull up. Uh, what about Austin Hooper? Yeah. He's back at practice. Um, I assume that he's going to be back either this week or next week. And we're going to throw him right back into our lineup once he's active, correct? Correct, yeah. Uh, he's 50-50 in my opinion. I think Hooper is 50-50 to play this week. I'm When he's on the field, I'm not worry, worried about him, though. Okay, that's good news for all y'all that have hold. Ingram should be back. Ingram should be back. Um, Golden Tate should be back, too, with his concussion, right? Has he been cleared yet? Yeah, he, 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 they pretty much cleared him. Okay. So, I mean, even with Eli Manning coming in as quarterback, I think I have a little less trust in the wide receivers than I do in Evan Ingram because we've already seen an Eli-Evan Ingram kind of connection. So, I still think Ingram is a, uh, a tight end one here. Um, 
even with the one app. of the things you have to be careful of is whenever income comes back from in- injury, I feel like his first game, he always struggles. Mm. We've seen this several times. If you look at the data, whenever he first came, first came back from an injury, he never looks good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look that up, actually. I'm going to go look at his game logs and see his multi-week injuries and what his game logs looks like on the first week back. So if you're not following me on Twitter, make sure you do that. I will post the results to my findings of that study on there at Nick underscore BDGE. Make sure you're following Dr. Morse at Dr. Jesse Morse on Twitter. Thank you all for joining us today. Make sure you smash that thumbs up button if you enjoyed the video. Make sure you subscribe to both of our channels if you are new. They will be covering you with everything injury-related fantasy football live in real time on Sundays, on Mondays, on Thursdays, whatever day of the week it is, they will be hitting you up. Dr. Morris, thank you for joining us. We will see you all next week.